Recently, I was working on a music video with my friends for a school project and a couple of the shots I wanted to get required pulling focus while moving. During the shoot, I used my gimbal's front dial to control the focus, but I would much prefer a dedicated follow focus setup, mainly for smoother focus and less latency. Researching follow focus systems online, they seemed reasonably priced with wireless ones costing a justified premium. However, instead of buying, I would still prefer to make my own as it will enable me to improve my design skills with the added benefit of gaining more gear at a lower cost. My inspiration for this project is the small rig 3010 follow focus system, an affordable piece of kit still capable of getting the job done. However, I didn't want to use a gear ring with my system as it seemed a bit annoying having to take them on and off when not in use. I instead wanted to try a friction approach using a TPU printed wheel. Small rig sells a silicone gear for their follow focus systems, which advertises smooth friction movement, so let's hope I can achieve something similar along those lines with my design. I'm going to design my system to work with my camera cage, which will be revised in the future as it doesn't look very cool right now, but it works so I'll be using it. I also want it to be adjustable and lightweight, it's meant to improve my workflow, not the opposite. What I've got in mind is to print some hollow rods for the system to clamp onto, giving it the ability to be adjustable while also being lightweight. As for strength, I'll just increase the parameters for the part when slicing it and all should be fine. The biggest challenge of this project I believe will be the gearing, but that's nothing some tutorials should be able to help with. To start, I'm going to open my camera cage file in Fusion 360 and begin by making a clamp for the rod to be fitted to. The diameter I'll be using is 15mm, so I'll make the rod mainly hollow but still have some inner material for strength as it is still plastic and plastic breaks. With version 1 now designed, it was time to slice it out and print it. The parts turned out fine and the tolerances were good, except for the gears, which I kind of underestimated the dimensions of, so I'll redesign those later. Since I can't find any bearings, I'm going to be using modified potentiometers for the rotation. Currently, they can only rotate so far before stopping, but you can enable them to rotate indefinitely by opening them up and cutting a small piece of metal. I know this isn't the best solution, but it will work for now. For version 1, I've designed the system to mount to a 15mm rod onto the side of the rig with an adapter using these mounting holes. If that doesn't work, I'll just use some heated threaded inserts to screw into, which I've recently purchased. I've also purchased a bunch of stuff from AliExpress for some upcoming projects which I'm looking forward to working on. Let's assemble version 1. I've encountered the first problem, which is that these screws are too short, but if I try and install longer ones, they don't fit. Luckily, these heat set inserts can be used to fix this. Even though everything seems to fit, the gears wobble on the potentiometers and the whole thing isn't very precise. Also, all the hot glue that I used didn't look very professional and it didn't last long either. For version 2, I adjusted all of the parts to be more precise and efficient. The gears turned out great with lots of detail, which was cool. However, the use of potentiometers was very imprecise and giving me varying results that I couldn't accept. Another problem was the mount I designed couldn't even allow the friction gear to make contact with the lens, so that needed a redesign as well as I didn't want to use a gearing. I decided to not cut any corners and make a system that mounts out of the way under the camera rig and is more user friendly. It was around this time that I found some spare bearings from my 3D printer when I took it apart. Now I could design the parts all around those, which will hopefully increase accuracy. Using the integrated McMaster car plugin in Fusion 360, I was able to design everything to scale, which I'm hoping will lead to better accuracy in the long run and make the whole project easier. For this iteration, I designed an under the rig mount for the rods, as well as redesigned the mount for the gears, and the gears themselves, which now had cutouts for the bearings to be press fit into. I printed the parts out, and they all looked pretty good, aside from the visible infill pattern on the outer wall, but as these are prototypes, it doesn't really matter too much. The question is, do they perform any better than the previous version? Attempting to do a test, I ended up snapping off one of the shafts inside of a bearing, so that meant I had to reprint that part again. I also printed off the rods and rod block for the rig. I added a cutout on the underside of the rod block, as I had a screw that wasn't long enough if it wasn't there. It also looked more refined than the previous version, which is always nice to see in iterative design and in general when making something. From here on, the project contained a lot of trial and error and reprinting of parts due to them breaking or fitment issues. This carried on until we reached some high version numbers which started working really well. 
The amount of versions that this had was crazy. I think this is like version 11 and what's on here is like version 12. There's a couple of versions in CAD. But it went from seemingly simple, you know, where you would press fit the potentiometers and all that, to, you know, it had to be revised for strength. And so this uh, had a filament change, but you know, you get the idea. It just kept getting revised. And that's actually a lot of fun. Uh, that's what I love about 3D printing and iterative design. You know, you keep going until you get the, uh, the final design. That just works. And that's, that's the rewarding part of it. You can see the biggest change happened when we went from potentiometers to bearings, because then we have this little shaft here, which broke off because it's so fragile to you know, bearing um, bearings. I was thinking of installing a, a metal shaft for strength, but that just seemed too complicated and I ended up doing the approach where I added a little cone there to theoretically improve it. It's only that the ones that printed vertically had weakness. The ones that printed horizontally with the supports were a lot stronger. Taking a closer look at the final design, it's just a, a combination of, you know, the, all the success of the previous designs. You know, it makes good contact. This is using PLA, this is using PLA, and then we've got TPU up here. Um, what I realized though, is that TPU is a bit more slippery than I thought. What would be really cool is if I made the whole thing out of PLA, like at the rim of a car, and had a silicone band around it. You know how you put like the tire around the rim of a car? That's what would be really cool. But yeah, it looks almost like a wrench, you know? Anyway. Aside from all that, it was now time to build the final rig, which was not as easy as I had hoped. Things kept moving and weren't giving me a trustworthy impression. Attempting to use the system, what I worried about came true, which was the lack of friction between the gear and the lens. Plus, the superglue wasn't enough to hold the bearings in place, and they kept falling out. With lots of fiddling, the system half works, but even pulling focus manually without the system would be easier at this point. If we look at the manual focus indicator on the DSLR, we can see that it's barely moving, and when it does, it's inconsistent and not smooth. So ultimately, this project did fail, but I did learn a lot along the way, and I figured out why it failed, which is quite important. But I don't have any more time for the rest of this project, so unfortunately we're going to have to leave it there until next time. So thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.